reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? Which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Um, in today's video, this is going to be the seventh installment of my little uh, anti-feminism series that I've been doing here. Um, and this topic is, the question is, are women in college whores, right? I read a statistic the other day, shocking, that less than 12% of women who graduate college are virgins. Less than 12% of women in college are virgins. Now I'm willing to bet at least 1% of that 12% is, is lying. Um, 1% for whatever reason, men just don't want them anyways. And probably another 1% uh, of that is probably some quality women who are um, engaged to be married but just haven't lost their virginity yet. Um, so that leads me to believe that the real number is probably closer to 10%. 10% of women in college who graduate um, are marriage material, um, meaning they've retained their virginity. Now, I put out an article the other day on Facebook explaining why feminism is destroying marriage you know and I want to talk about that today and ask the question you know is teaching girls to go out and to college um, actually good for them or is it turning them into whores you know um, and I need to preface this bef uh, by, by defining what I mean when I say whore you know if you look back in my videos I made a video where I talk about the difference between a prostitute and a whore um, but for the sake of this video I'm not going to re-preach that message um, but, you know, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to define a whore as simply a woman who, uh, who loses her virginity or who, who gives her virginity away to somebody other than her husband before marriage. Okay? That, that is my definition of whore. For the same reason, um, and it only takes one sexual partner before marriage to become a whore, in, um, in my definition, right? Um, for the same reason where if you were married to a woman and she cheated on you with a man, you know, it would only take one person for you to consider her an adulteress, right? Anyway, my point is, 70 years ago, in the 1950s, less than 3% of women admitted to having more than 10 sexual partners, right? Now, in modern times, uh, you can multiply that by five. So, there, now you, nowadays, you have over 15% of women who have admitted to having more than 10 sexual partners. Now, what has changed in our culture where women now are having more sexual partners than they did 50, uh, 50, 70 years ago? You know, and one of my biggest arguments and what I'm gonna talk about today is feminism, and I'm gonna focus in on this. And what I mean by feminism is that, you know, the girls are taught to abandon their traditional feminine role of getting married young and having children. And now they are being taught to delay marriage and seek a career and go to college first and provide for herself. You see, what these feminism uh, people, men, both men and women can be feminists, but what these feminists are trying to argue is that men aren't to be trusted. You know, men aren't taking responsibility. So, you know, they argue that these young girls who are 14, 15, 16 years old, you know, they're too young to get married. That, they, you know, they don't know any better yet. So, but what does the Bible say? You know, the Bible says that young women are commanded to get married, bear children, and guide the house. I've been preaching this all week long. And, and the older women, you know, they're supposed to teach the younger women how to, love their, how to love their husbands, how to love their children, how to be discreet, chaste keepers at home, right? Um, you see, even God himself chose Mary, the mother of Jesus, a young virgin, when she was only 14 years old at the time, you know, she was already engaged to be married to her husband Joseph when she was only 14, and God came to her, and God said, you know, you're ready to have a child. You know, he sent an angel to her and said, Hail Mary, you know, full of grace, thou hast found favor with God. Right, you see, feminism is lying to our young girls, telling them that, you know, they're too young to have kids. 
But what did God say, right? God said, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, right? Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, you know? You see, a girl who has her period, you know, generally girls have their period, their first period between, you know, age 13, 14, 15, somewhere in there, you know, and that, that biologically is telling her that, hey, you're ready. You're ready to get pregnant. You're ready to get married. You're ready to have kids, right? And, you know, she starts producing eggs, very valuable eggs. God treasures these eggs. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, you know. You know, these are, um, can reproduce life. And, you know, God told us be fruitful and multiply, right? But what's happening to our young boys? You know, our young boys are being taught, you know, don't get married to these girls. They're too young. You know, don't have kids. You're too young. You know, you need to wait. You know, waste those eggs. Make, and to make matters even worse, instead of helping our young boys succeed and become responsible men, you know, who are capable of taking care of a family, you know, they make the young girls compete with the boys for resources, you know. Um, men and women are competing for jobs nowadays. And who can make more money? Who can bring home more uh, dollars to take care of the family? Which has always been, uh, throughout history, the man's responsibility, right? And then they wonder why, you know, our young boys aren't becoming responsible. You know, why aren't they taking responsibility? You know, you see, if you're going to give somebody responsibility... You know, if you're going to tell the men, hey, you're responsible to provide for the family and protect the family, you know, you also have to give them power and authority with it because with responsibility, you also have to have the respect that goes along with it because if you're, if you're going to give somebody responsibility without the respect, that's going to lead to irresponsibility. Let me give you an example. What I mean is, for example, let's say you're going to take an airplane ride, right? Well, when you get on that airplane, the pilot is the captain, right and he is responsible for every soul on board meaning that if anything goes wrong right if anything goes wrong on that plane they're going to hold him responsible but at the same time with his responsibility comes respect comes power you know when the captain tells you hey put on your seatbelt turn off your cell phones you do it right because you give him the respect because um, with his responsibility comes power, respect, authority, and things like that. You know, you see what's happening to our young boys and girls in, 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 in this feminist society is they're not teaching them uh, to, uh, to value the man. They're not teaching to respect the man. They're still putting the burden of responsibility on us, you know, and, and, and the same goes for the girls. You know, in the old days, uh, we taught our girls, hey, you're responsible to maintain your virginity, to get married, to raise children. You know, but in along with that, we also gave them honor. We gave them their respect, you know. We would hold doors open for them. We would buy them flowers. We'd get down on our uh, bended knee, you know, and propose marriage to them. Because we said, hey, we respect you, right? But we also are going to hold you to your responsibility of being a wife, being a mother, right? And the young boys, we would tell them, hey, you're responsible for, for, for protecting and providing for your family, taking care of your wife and kids. But along with that, we also gave them respect, right? We paid them more in the work. Uh, we paid them more at work. That we gave them the first uh, opportunity to get employed. Well, um, we 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 made them managers. We made them um, uh, politicians, soldiers. You know, community leaders. You know, we made them the boss. And you know, women would call us sir uh, in public. You know, they would not talk back to us. They would be submissive. You know. But now look what feminism has done. They said to the girls, hey, you're not responsible to get married anymore. You can go out there and get your college degree first, right? You're not responsible for maintaining your virginity. Just use your birth control. Just use condoms, you know? You're not expected. We don't expect you to have the responsibility of raising children anymore. And, and what that has done is that has turned men against women and women against men. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it train up a child right teach them encourage them you see if you guide your child when they're young you can just like the bible says to train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it right now a child's not going to learn right away but if you train them and you train them and you keep working with them they can learn you know children are very smart but, you know, if you tell them, no, you're too young, you can't do it, I'm not even going to train you because you're too young, you know, guys, uh, that's, that's going to, uh, as a recipe for failure right off the bat, you know. Um, let me give you this example. You know, we send men off to war eight, at 18 years old, 
at 18 years old we're sending men off to war to put their lives on the line for their country right and and we don't tell them hey you're too young you can't do it don't join the army yet you, you have your whole life ahead of you right go to college first no we're teaching them hey you you can do it get the job done i'm gonna we're gonna train you we're gonna give you the training you need to succeed and get the job done and you know we don't expect 18 year olds to go out there and win the war by themselves right but with, with the older generation helping them guiding them you know your older sergeants your captains your generals you know we can give them advice give them support and the motivation that they need to succeed and achieve victory you know but you see teaching women that hey you're too young to have a family you know you're too young to get married you can't do it well that just leads them to becoming a whore because they're saying well i can't do it anyway so i might as well just do it uh the wrong way right do it this other way you know and and like like for example you take you, you you train on these young men hey you can't do it right well that's that's going to lead them to just become lazy, become irresponsible, become the whoremongers, become the fornicators that all these women are blaming us that we are, right? Guys, my point in this message is this. I'm not blaming young women and I'm not blaming young uh, men for becoming whores and whoremongers, right? But I am, um, or excuse me, I'm, you know, I'm not blaming men, you know, for for being irresponsible losers and you know who don't take care of the family not, i'm not here to bash you right if, if, if that's your case if that's your situation i'm not here to bash you but what i'm saying is this if you continue to preach this ideology right after you know the truth you know this feminine uh, feminist cancer is destroying our society and you continue to lie to our young girls and tell them hey you should be getting married young you should be having children even though we see hey teaching uh put, shoving all these girls into the school into the workforce is turning them into whores it's just causing them to lose their virginity they're not being mothers they're not being wives they're, they're the divorce rates out of control you know teaching them to compete for jobs uh with jobs for men you know listen that's the person i have no respect for right if you've done those things in the past but you've forsaken it and saying hey i'm gonna preach right in the future i have nothing but respect for you nothing but respect right if you're a woman you know who lost your virginity young didn't get married whatever you know shame on you for doing that you know but i don't blame you because that's the way we were all taught to do it right so yeah we fell victim shame on us fool me once uh shame on me but fool me twice shame or excuse me fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me right listen if you want forgiveness if you want my respect you need to admit that hey what i did was wrong but i'm gonna preach against it and I'm going to change and I'm going to uh, teach the other younger women and boys not to do the same thing I did right nothing but respect for you at that point nothing but respect and you know guys I'm not here to beat you up <laughs> I'm in the same boat you are you know I was told hey don't get married young you know these girls aren't ready yet you know wait until uh, they graduate wait until they get older um, just sleep around use condoms you know I didn't do that but you know I was lied to just the same so I fell to the victim of um, becoming lazy, becoming a whoremonger, you know, falling victim to pornography and, and all this other stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. But you know, the difference between me is I admit that, hey, what I did was wrong. And I'm here to ch train the younger boys to not do what I did. I'm here to teach the younger generation, hey, don't be like me. You don't want to fall into that victim. And I'm not going to teach you these lies, these feminist lies. You know, I'm trying to teach you to, uh, that this matriarchal society now that we have where um, women are abusing their power and their privilege, you know, that needs to be destroyed, that needs to be dismantled, you know, because, you know, we're left with no choice at this point in time, right? You know, they expect us men to be responsible, but, you know, they aren't giving us the respect that we deserve that comes along with that responsibility, you know what I'm saying? And they wonder why we disrespect women and call them whores when they're not being responsible, when they're not maintaining their virginity before marriage, when they're not becoming uh, young wives and mothers, why should we respect you? you don't, you're not taking up your responsibility, you know? So this is basically the essence of MGTOW, right? And don't stop hammering it away, gentlemen. Don't stop it. You know, hold women to their feminine responsibilities. If they aren't going to acknowledge that the young... Um, women who do get married who do have children who do remain faithful to their husband if they don't want to acknowledge them as 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 being higher on a pedestal than these whores who just go lose their virginity and go get a career nah no no respect for those if these if these feminists continue to refuse to shame women who give away their virginity 
you know, who seek after a career, avoid avoid their responsibilties. You know, we're going to keep hammering it away. MGTOW is not going to stop. It's not going to end. It's going to keep growing. We're going to keep shaming you for the, your lack of responsibility. No honor for you. No respect for you. If you're not going to at least even acknowledge that you have a responsibility that you need to be, um, um, you know, striving for, you know, that's all I'm asking. At least strive. You know, I used to tell my woman that, you know, at least strive to do the right way you know and i'll forgive you when you do wrong but at least can we agree that this is what we're striving for you know what i mean this is what we should be shooting for you know and we're gonna just keep hammering it away guys no respect if you're not going to take responsibility if you're not going to acknowledge your responsibility no respect for you you know that that's that's basically the whole essence of migtow you know but 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 here's my point here's the moral of the story here's the moral of my message guys Keep fulfilling your side of the bargain, you know. Be the best man you can be. Take responsibility. Be prepared to uh, provide and protect for a family. You know, even if they're not going to give you your respect, you will always have the moral high ground if you acknowledge and accept your responsibility and take heed to it, right? If these other women, they don't want to take heed to their responsibility, they don't want to follow, they don't want to acknowledge that they have responsibility, then you know what? No, no, no respect for them. Nothing but shame for them. Shame on you for not uh, taking hold of your responsibility. But you know what? We can grab the bull by the horns. You know, we can be, we can be the best man that we can be. You know. But anyway, that's my message, guys. Um, that's my message. You know, the moral of the story is keep the moral high ground. You know, don't become like they are. You know, don't give up your responsibilities and become a loser and become. You know, some deadbeat whoremonger who just wants to sleep and pump and dump women. You know what I mean? Keep the moral high ground. Stand your ground. And uh, we'll, we'll just get it done. And until they start taking responsibility, um, we just won't give them any respect. Anyway, that's my message. I don't want to go too long. Um, until next time, gentlemen, this is Sean Elvis signing off. And uh, as usual, I'm going to give God the last word. I'll see you guys later. Peace. I'm going to read from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. The Bible says, Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen.